All right. Let's do a home video style of my 1976 Plymouth Fury Sport base model. These base models here, they came without any rubber stripping around the bumper right here and instead had uh, these uh, rivets soldered onto them. Which is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. These are Plymouth Fury lights, only on the Fury. You get your nice big Plymouth, your chrome surrounding the end of the trunk. Uh, all like most, if not uh, almost all, except for maybe one or two. Fuel caps right there, like all the 70s cars, my Lays era. Nice, big, protective bumper. That's what I like about these cars. These bumpers that protrude out a little bit like that. It looks nice. Those aggressive fury lights. Uh, the government mandated side beam ones. I do have the bumper pushed in a little bit. If you see there, it's supposed to end uh, somewhere around here instead of here. Uh, I got the car like that, so I don't know what happened. There's a little, uh, I don't know if you can see it, mark right there of what happened, but uh, it's nothing. The car's gonna get repainted anyways, that's gonna be fixed. It is an original paint for the most part. The trunk is original paint. Uh, this quarter panel here to the door had to be repainted. There was a accident done that uh, will be fixed. Uh, yeah, just, these are the base model hubcaps. Uh, this did not come with uh, dual um, white ring tires. I did that myself. It gives it kind of a more early 70s appeal than this mid 70s style, but I do like it more. And I will be keeping this car all factory. From hubcaps to radio, everything. Uh, if I had uh, any other bottle but the base, I would have the protective uh, beam here with vinyl. I forgot they have a specific name for it, uh, body side molding. I don't have that. Wish I had that. Yeah, the chrome underneath right there. Nice. Got the, got one mirror only. Do not have a mirror on the other side with uh, Chrysler's attention to detail placement right there, as you can tell. You see here, you got the Fury, but I bought another one because this one just says fur. Also re, so I just have fur for now. That's no problem. Oh, one thing I do need, I do need another one of these uh, chrome strips around the wheel well. There, um, it's missing on that one over there. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I noticed that there was something wrong with the hubcaps. Uh, they're supposed to be black here and uh, gold, but this one's uh, faded gold and white. I don't know if it's because it was made like that or if it's faded. That's something I don't know. And I have my uh, exclusive Hialeah tires from where I live in uh, Florida. It's a 10 minute, 15 minute drive from Miami. This is the suburbs of the city over here where it's been voted the uh, worst driving town in the, of the decade, last decade, so yeah, it's on the list. This is the uh, front end, it's beautiful. I love, I love this front end. I've always liked the style of the front end in this car. It's always been such a pleaser to me. Yeah, it looks like a big 70s mustache. I like it, I really like it. That's an original 75, but a uh, 76 plate. It has a sticker there, 1975 Florida switch, or 1976 Florida switch to the sticker system. And the first number, or the first digit that you would see would be the county. And number one is Miami-Dade County, which is where I live. So I managed to get one. Pretty lucky about me. At one point, I believe that this car did have 
bumper protruding sticking out here um because the holes are still there shouldn't be there if not they would be rivet up like rivet up like that so i'm glad they took it out i kind of do like it without it as a makes it look nice i don't know it looks good on fords and gms some of them but never never does look good on mopars these light bezels beautiful i believe they're also on the dodge uh, chargers or coronets i believe the coronet or the chargers when they're upgraded in coronet standard uh, these are not no cheap headlights uh, they have been replaced and I don't like buying those Sylvania or Wagner or whatever the hell they are. These are premium ones. They tend to last longer and don't crack. If you buy a Sylvania one, oh God, worst choice you make in your life, really. This mustache grill is just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I did repaint the inner part of it. You see that black there? I repainted that just cause it looks, you know, new. This is the Fury right here, uh, or the Plymouth ornament. You got your nice Plymouth logo there. This, uh, for some reason, I've had people confuse it for a Mercedes logo, but uh, everybody has their eye, really. You go again, you get this side. Uh, these body fillers made by Chrysler are not, uh, and aren't like Ford or GMs, or yeah, or GMs most specifically, where they're very foamy and deteriorate. Chrysler decided to make it of a hard material, but uh, they lose their paint very fast. Even when they were new, they'd lose their paint fast, but it's permanent. They don't break. That's how it's supposed to look. That's the, Fury, the full Fury logo. You got that right there, beautiful right there. Uh, that's my antenna. Nice, tall, easy to steal antenna. Uh, no mirror. Well, easy to steal? No, sorry. Those are the... Uh, Chrysler made that for us. Try to make it unsealable. No mirror there. The chrome stripping underneath. I don't know if you can see the difference in the paint job I had to do from the quarter panel on the door, but I, I'm not gonna be painting it like this. I want it to look more like this. This is how it's supposed to look. So I'm gonna tell my paint guy, hey, I didn't like this. Get your original Chrysler mirror glass there. They got their number, their DLT. Rear quarter panel here. It's pretty nice, pretty nice. Solid, smooth. Unlike the other side. There's the, the difference in paint tone from that uh, carbon fiber. I don't know what that material is. And the fit was great, if you could see right there. And, uh, they'd fade out, but they wouldn't deteriorate like GMs. Oh, that's a big bonus between the GMs and this one. They would not, they would not deteriorate out. I am missing my reflector lights on the bumper on both sides. I don't know what happened to that, but uh, I'll get it if I want it. I can tell this car's been jacked up a few times here. A few times, they made that hole much bigger. That's how your car would look like in the 70s once you need a jacket a lot. I believe there's a filler here in the bumper that I'm missing. I'm not sure. I think it's just like this thing here. This material that if you touch it, it literally just starts to cease to exist. So I don't want to touch it too hard. And uh, yeah, you look in here. You look here. You're looking at this Plymouth Fury. A nice, affordable, mid-sized car in sedan, coupe, or wagon for your family. My Plymouth. With electronic ignition systems, that's something they always boasted about. Let's take a look inside. Get your pull-up doors. These are unstoppable. They never break. This is your base model interior. Uh, it is not a two-tone. It's supposed to look like that, but it's sun-faded. But even though it's sun faded, I think it looks better with the two-ton. Rear seat passengers that get their ashtray here. Be nice. You got your standard door locks. Push and pull. Emphasis on pull there. 
crank window that works effortlessly completely looped up the system about a year ago and it's still still running great yeah, i'm gonna have to get this whole thing panel new well not new but used the same color because of this the other one uh, i could care less these door panels there these doors are pretty big a little trick i like to do to these doors is i like to remove the pin keep it without a pin because the pin will actually damage the door system itself start causing it to bend and all sorts of not nice things i bought a new door seal not here just here this whole area down and around the door i, I couldn't get it. it you know this is the fit that it gave came with and you know, it, it fits just right you know just just right so i have to live with that i'm gonna be getting a new window seal this one is rotting out it's literally deteriorating day by day and i don't leak any water so for now it's all right let's do a video of the back first in the back you get this uh sun faded two-tone again there and up there too Get your clothing rack or whatever you want to put there rack seatbelt strap Chrysler politely made the seatbelts the same color and the uh, strap as well as the car interior very nice the rear seats are just mint really there they're in good condition and on the other side if you look at that the other side hasn't been sun faded except for the upper part and that's how it's supposed to look that is not, uh, that is something people have always confused. That is not a crack. That is a factory line that they made, Mark, to take out the seatbelt. So, that is uh, something that I've always heard people say, oh, you got a crack there. That is not a crack. Though it looks like one. Uh, you got your back lap belts, Chrysler colored too. Oh, they all work, all been tested. Uh, here's where they did cheap out. You get black. Ah, they work at least. Uh, this is my daily driver, so I kind of got all my stuff here. That is the original floor mat. I'm going to be changing it out because the front is just completely off of color and it just doesn't look right anymore. That's the original floor mat. Your seatbelt holders. They're blue, color coordinated. And Chrysler actually... Uh, made a commercial relating to the seat belts because these are the easy to move ones where they would actually move the entire thing not like other people where they were stiff and it was just a tragedy to move like ford and gm that's what i've always liked about chrysler they're they're engineering not just making things that sell headrest became standard around this time uh, to make the cars uh less deadly because what your head would whiplash back but now you have a protective barrier that uh, darker color is, um, sadly, that was uh, done as part of a film. This car, this car was used in a professional college film, a movie, really. And uh, yeah, they used fake blood as part of the movie. And this car had, to, I had to clean this from fake blood all over, from the steering wheel underneath the dash, the dash, the seats, the carpet. It was covered in that fake blood. I got it all out, but the stain is permanent. But hey. I have a movie car. <laughs> Not everybody can say they got a movie car. Uh, yeah, you can see the seat's original. I like to redo it, but I want to find somebody that has this color and this design. I, I mean, I want this design to be exact. I mean, I don't want a plain design. I want this design. I love it. I really do love it. I forgot to talk about this. I'm going to need a new cover for the, uh, the uh, push and pull door push and pull door uh, seat thing I didn't explain this but Chrysler made it swing not straight but facing at an angle so you could get an easier that is another one of Chrysler's engineering geniuses and I love about them and uh, you got your this is where I want to replace it it's just brown and discolored here so I got to replace it and then you get inside. That's your uh, parking brake and park release or emergency brake. 
high beams down there, which I've always preferred high beams there. On a modern car, I suffered like a bastard trying to find out the high beams. Um, you get the hood release on the dash, which I saw on the build sheet. It was a, a free option that came with this car. Um, they just gave it free instead of, because uh, apparently it's, it was an option. So that's good. Brake pedal, accelerator ca uh, cable. And then if you look over here, you got your Chrysler vents, air vents, because again, no air conditioning base model. This one's a little rough. I don't know why. I believe the rod has to be bent or something, but it's rough. This one just flows in and out. Uh, the steering wheel was a free factory option as well. It's uh, called the... Uh, the luxury wheel, the luxury steering wheel, which I much more prefer the luxury one than the sport one. I think it adds a nice flair and look to it. Nice touch, nice look. Uh, they all fade out here in this area. All of them. All of them. This all wood just fades out right here. Common thing from these Chryslers. It is an automatic. Uh, that's what I do love about it. It's an automatic. Uh, I believe that was the only option filled out or... The only option it came with automatic 318, which, hey, that's how I would buy this car. I would buy this with no other option than an automatic 318, not a 360, not a slant 6, not even a 400, a 318. I need a good daily driver, reliable gas mileage. Woo! This car came just like that. 318's got the 100 mile speedometer. And this was before the 80 miles, which came out in 80 something, early 80s, or even the end of the 70s. I don't remember. You get a temperature and gas gauge, oil light, just uh, it tells you when things are not good, and then an alternator gauge. Uh, I had to replace it because uh, the other one just stopped working. And, uh, oh, they're pretty good. They're, they're pretty good systems. They don't tend to give issues. And I see models get this nice little cover. Attention to detail there. Two speed wipers. Three speed was a, an option. I only get the two speed, which. Yippee. Your light switch, pull one for a day, pull two for uh, your regular lights. And then you got your heater controls. By then, heater was standard on every car because uh, you could uh, legally not freeze to death. I'm missing the rubber here. I really want it, need it, gotta find it. Uh, I have the heater actually disconnected because the heater core started leaking. And to do the heater core, I have to remove the dash. Uh, I wouldn't say the whole dash, but a uh, huge majority of the dash, which, well, again, I live in Miami, Florida. The day I use the heater is the day I wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna live anymore. Uh, radio right there. That's your factory AM only radio, mono speaker. Get your value, your tone, speaker tone, uh, AM only, you got five radio stations. That's your one and only speaker. Mono speaker system, you know. Ashtray with the uh, lighter and the um, the uh, lighter and ash. That's a nice Polaroid someone took of my car. Always keep it there with me. And then uh, your glove box here. This glove box is the style which I like it. Uh, I gotta fix that. Gotta fix that right there. That's just destroyed. Uh, other companies, not other companies, but later on, you would see them use the... Uh... Oh, there's still blood there. Yeah, well, that, that's the fake blood that was all over this car. That's the fake blood that was all over the damn car. But yeah, no, this is... Uh, they would use another design. Other cars would, uh, and Chrysler's too, would use a uh, sort of a folder design where the pocket to hold stuff would be here instead of in there, which I hate that. I love it like this. This is how it should be. A folder design is a pain in the ass. It had issues from factory. I got the build sheet for this car. It was underneath the seat. And uh, there were two issues this car had. Glove box issues, which they never fixed it. Thank you. And they had another issue with a uh, with a rear glass would leak in. They fixed that for sure. They did a good with that. And then yeah, this is the heater core, right? 
Yeah, that's the heater core in there. Uh, it's not just uh, take out the screws and fix it. It's uh, remove the dash and fix it, sadly. This is not a factory uh, cup holder. I got this. This is a factory cup holder, but for a Ford... Uh, no, not a Ford. A Mercury Comet. Yeah. This came out of a Mercury Comet, and the Mercury Comet was blue. So this Mercury Comet sun faded. And... Uh, that sun faded looked just like this, so I assumed they were the same color. Well, the Mercury Comet was actually the same color. When I went to the junkyard and picked this out, I was super happy. I mean, I get an original 70s cup holder. It's huge. It digs deep back in there. Coin slots, cup holders, empty spot, concealed spot. Oof. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you get your other door there. This door, I would say, is in better condition. Mostly because, you know... <laughs> I see that this car was used by one person, and uh, well, I've been tra I've been taking somebody along with me in this car, and uh, they've created a hole there. Uh, it's the back there. You saw it already. I love the roof design. It has a design sort of like the seats, but a little different. Love it. Uh, more one friend of mine decided to smack the light by accident with a big uh, big plastic speaker and. Uh, yeah, light works. Just gotta get a new one of these. Get your sun visors there. Something I noticed that all these Chrysler ones do is they got this air pocket. I do have my starting instructions though, which uh, I always send this to everybody so they know how to start their cars, you know, so they understand what a uh, but a, uh, Christ, how a Chrysler system is supposed to be started, uh, you're not supposed to just pump it, no. You first start it there, you're supposed to push it down. You have to do is push it down to the floor and then slowly remove the foot from the pedal. I take three seconds to do it and it works great for me. Then you turn the key to start and then you hold and crank until it starts. And then if the, if it's fast, to press the pedal for five seconds after the start and then once you already have the engine started you drove it and then now you're coming back from the groceries you push it down a third of the way or a little less than a third of the way i would say i personally say a little less a third of the way turn it to start and then crank it and it should start easily and if it fails to start which after 10 seconds then uh yeah you might want to shove that thing to the floor and then crank because it's flooded Uh, that's, yeah, that's how you're supposed to start them. And, uh, yep. I'm going to show you underneath the hood before I take it on a drive. I much more prefer to do that than the other way around. <laughs> Factory 318, the best thing to come out of the Mopar. These things are bulletproof and unstoppable. If you saw the uh, the uh, odometer, it was reading 28 something. Yeah, it's uh, 228,000 miles. 228,000 miles, never opened engine. Uh, so, and it runs beautifully. You can't even feel it while it's idling. That's just how good these things are built. I mean, it's just majesty. I made this a daily driver, so I did have to, uh, I didn't have to, but I decided, hey, for safety precautions so it doesn't just happen. I changed the ignition box, voltage regulator, ballast resistor, ignition relay, alternator, fuel pump. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, I changed the sparks every four months and I changed the wires when I got it too. You know, the car likes that little tune-up. Uh, I don't have this connected. This is bad. Do not connect this if you live in a hot climate or anywhere underneath the state of uh, Tennessee or Tennessee. You're not going to need it. Bad for the car. Uh, doesn't leak tranny fluid because it was uh, redone 55,000 miles ago. So that's good. Do my oil changes whenever I see or every 3,500 miles. Every 3,000. Uh, these fans did not come with um, clutches, which, well, doesn't need it. Doesn't even run hot. It's a factory radiator that I'm, uh, I'm gonna record just scuds because it's leaking, really. That's the reason why. Uh, this thing is uh, held up pretty good. 
funny guy there. Uh, I have that disconnected. And um, these are the heater lines. I, I still have it connected to the heater core. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna. I do plan to remove them and I just put these uh, caps over them that I will need to be replacing sooner or later because they do tend to leak after a while. And, yeah. Your vacuum boost and your vacuum boost reader there. Uh, I don't know what they're for really. I believe they're for acceleration. But uh, I, even if you do change the valve covers or something, keep the vacuum boost. You're gonna need it. You put your oil in there. Uh, I could tell that whoever had this car before one of the owners wasn't very good with oil changes really uh, they were it was a little dirty in there which saddens me a little bit oh, it's okay oh I did also change the cap rotor in the uh, ignition coil there you go just cuz I uh, can't remember what that relays for that relays for the EGR which is clogged up, so I'm gonna just leave it. Your wiper motor too. Mm, I had to change that hose there in the highway one day. It uh, blew up on me, so that was fun. Luckily, I drove her home with coolant all over the engine, and it did not complain whatsoever. So, welcome to Mopar. Quality at its finest, really. I repainted this uh, air filter. It needed it, so I did it. All these stickers, all these stickers that let me know uh, that one. Um, this is my only car that I have with a diehard battery because conveniently my alternator and the battery died at an auto zone. So I said, fuck it. I never like to buy any auto zone batteries. I go to my battery guy and I get a battery for $55, any size, $55. You morons that buy these stuff, you're wasting your money. No, there's no difference between gold, plastic, silver, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same shit. Pollution system is disconnected. I cannot just have it there. The pump has no belt running on it, so. Get that extra five horsepower apparently, or whatever it is. PCB system is still connected. I recommend that for everybody. It keeps the sludge away from the uh, valves anywhere else. I got a new brake booster, I gotta install it. Mine is leaking me crazy and I have a uh, non-powered brakes car, so it is impossible to find one that is uh, new. I had to buy an old one because I don't have power brakes, which is fine, it's okay, it's fine. Our sync system doesn't leak at all, so good work there, original distributor. I always keep the original distributor, just change the uh, Cap and rotor as needed, and then the reluctor, your pickup coil, or vacuum bed vents if needed. Always give the original distributor. Those shafts you cannot replace them. This thing does have some weird vacuum lines. I took this one out because the last thing you need is hot air coming in in Miami, Florida. Just wired it up. The wires for that is underneath, so first thing you want to do is remove that. Chrysler has the uh the wash feature on both of the uh, washers, which is the best thing they could have done. I don't like how Ford puts it in one, it leaves the other side just dirty. And then, I don't know how GM does it, I'm not much of a GM guy, I'm, more, I'm a Mopar guy. And then I do work on Fords too, just because I like Fords too, but uh, I stay away from GMs. Not my cup of tea. They don't have the uh, flash and flare as other cars do, they're more cookie cutter. I love this. These things never go bad. It's impossible for these things to go bad. Not like Ford that has a spring that gets bad. These things are best thing ever. And uh, yeah, I got this space here for anything I want really. <laughs> Safety standard. Vacuum there, your timing and your idle settings. At the 318 cubic inch engine family. Idles at 900 RPMs, uh, and timing is advanced by one or two, or advanced is a two, which is close to nothing. Yeah, that's a high idle. 
I don't know why it's such a high idle, but uh, oh, I think I know why really. The higher the idle, the less you feel the engine, so I'm not complaining. I don't, I don't want to feel the engine at all. Hell, I get no road feel, which is something else I love. Modern cars, they give you road feel or other stuff. Nope, I get no road feel whatsoever. I get a nice, small feeling of driving. All right, let's do the nice uh, cold start. I haven't started it since last night, so this is what I have to do on a daily basis. You remember. Yeah, push it to the floor. One, two, and three. And you turn to the arm. I like to wait for the seatbelt light to go off. Let the ignition system properly warm up, and then you just. And it's on. There you go. It's on. And I leave it idling until the, it reaches the first mark on the uh, temperature gauge. It's just a habit I have. I love letting my cars warm up. <sighs> my mom's uh, car didn't last very long because she decided, oh, forget about warming up. She would get in the car, start it, and uh, two seconds later, she was already going 45 miles an hour in the school zone. So, well, not school zone, but you get what I'm saying. She just starts the car and goes, Phew! right off. This wood trim, or not the wood trim, this panel here is itself is already a hard to find panel. Because I don't have an AC model, so the AC vents aren't there, so that's uh, hard to find there. And then the non-AC ones are, this little piece right here is already hard to find too, so yeah. And uh, yeah, these, these Chrysler's beautiful works, everything all the way from the... Uh, from the uh, cheapest Plymouth, uh, not the cheapest, the Fury, which was the cheapest one that came with this interior style, to the Chrysler Newport. This was the base model seat for or seat or package for any car. You get this design for all the way from the Fury. I believe you also got it in what was under the Fury, the Valiant. Yeah, the Valiant, and the the dark version of the Fury. I, I forgot. I always forget the Stinger. I believe it's a Stinger. Yeah, you get this interior, and then the Plymouth Horizon just got some Chinese crap, which I, I never, I never work on a Horizon. I refuse to work on any Horizons or economy size ones. And all these, I love, I love this design. It's such a malaise fuselage hypnotic design from the time period. It really does have its catch and flair, it's styling. It's just wonderful. Just letting the car warm up here. Uh, if you want to see the turn signals, uh, it is not broken. That is just their speed. It is just their speed. And uh, well, the only thing that is broken is uh, hey, this side. Just put a piece of tape over it because when I took it apart to clean it, I got distracted. I put too much pressure and I conveniently broke it right on the part of the arrow. So it's just tape covering it. And I left a little bit of space for the light so I could at least tell it's on. You got your wipers there, your lights. When you, you can't see it, but when you turn the lights on here, the, the color's green. Pretty color there. Always like that green color. I do plan to redo this dash. It's already been redone, but I'm gonna redo it again. I don't like cracks. I don't like an H look, so get ready for that. People in town know me. Oh, is that Julian? Oh, yeah, that is him. It's got the fuzzy dice that matches with the car. And uh, I always keep my little trees here. I like the new car scent. I also like the color of it, blue on blue. <laughs> Not like the black one. Uh, the backup mirror, it's got mold on it. Uh, I don't know what the, I don't know uh, how that happens, but get your mold there. Uh, yeah, that, that also gets deteriorated with the sun. So it, it adds to a nice two-tone appeal that 